It's said that practice makes perfect. But when many pro athletes have performance problems these days, they're likely to look to their analysts rather than their coach for help. We want to first turn our attention to the psychology of sports. At the professional level, all athletes are exceptionally talented and they're all physically gifted. What often separates the winners from the losers is their mental makeup. It's why pros contend that if you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And it's why an increasing number of athletes are now looking to psychologists to move past specific problems or improve their overall performance. Our Bernard Goldberg has a look at the new brand of head games today's athletes are playing. Well, you do. I don't believe this. It was one of the biggest collapses in the history of golf. The final hole of the 1999 British Open. Oh dear, this is so, 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 so sad. Jean Vandevelt had a three-stroke lead going into the 18th hole. No, Jean, please, would somebody kindly go and stop him? Give him a large brandy and mop him down. All he needed was a double bogey to win. Instead, he triple bogeyed the hole and lost the tournament. They are the two dirtiest words in the world of sports. Mental block. Sprained ankle, broken arm. Athletes know how to deal with stuff like that. But when the problem is mental, when it's only in your head, that's when things can get really scary. How important is mind over matter in sports? You tell me, was it mental when Mike Vanderjack, the most accurate kicker in NFL history, missed this field goal by a mile with the season on the line? And it's no good! He missed it. How about this, with the World Series hanging in the balance? It gets through Buckner! And what about Shaq? So the question, Dr. Freud, is this. Can highly paid, big-time professional athletes really let their mind get in the way of their body? Sasser says his mental quirk came after a collision jolted him at home plate and for some reason after that his mind took over and the hesitation kicked in. But here's where it gets tricky. In practice with no fans at the ballpark and no one watching on TV the problem disappeared completely. So if you're a big-time athlete but don't necessarily want to go to a shrink where do you go if you still want some help? That's right. Really learning at the unconscious level. Where else? To a sports hypnotist. And focus on one thing at a time. Warrior. Warrior. That's right. Everybody already knows the answer to their question, why they are not doing what they want to do and what they can do to rectify it. But it's not something that you're consciously aware of. Subconsciously, you are aware of it. If that's true, Steve Sachs deep down knew what he was doing wrong. And after four months and way too many errors, he made a conscious decision to stop thinking and just reflexively throw the ball to first. It worked. The experts have this little technique that if you're having a problem with something, you visualize something pleasant. Right. Visualize something that makes you happy. Visualize uh, girls. Visualize whatever to get your mind off of throwing. Visualize it. Did you try that? Oh, I tried everything. Every happy thought I could think of. And? No success. The happy thoughts were good, but no success for throwing the ball back in the picture. And no happy ending either. The mental block finally forced him out of the game. The little hesitation was too much of a distraction, especially for the pitchers who were losing their rhythm because of Sasser's mental stutter. Stay not good. Stay so, not good. what should we make of all of this? Could Yogi have been right that 90% of hitting is half mental? And if you think too much, does that mean you ought to have your head examined? In your mind, I want you to place that image of Bernie's success. He feels relaxed. He's at ease. He expects the ball to go in. Come on. Does this stuff really work? Can the power of positive thinking, can my subconscious mind, whatever that is, really make a difference? I guess so. Okay, be honest with me. How many takes? I oh, get out of here. One Why do some guys develop mental blocks and others don't? Are some predisposed because they have a more yeah, fragile yeah, 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 psyche or yeah. more fragile ego? Yeah, I, I, I think yes. I think the answer is yes to that. And the good news is, is that it can be overcome. It can be overcome 
if you start to believe in yourself, if you start to learn how to have confidence in yourself, even those people with pre preconceived uh, or predisposed to that kind of thing can overcome it. And that's our show for this evening.